Hey, happy Global CE Day. It's Tom Judd from CED with my friend Sam from uh, Uganda, and he's going to pronounce his last name for us. Sam, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm um, uh, happy to, to talk to you. My second name is Biamukama. I knew that, Biamukama. Of course I knew that. Yeah, hey, Sam. You pronounce it well. Tell us about your uh, role in clinical engineering there in Uganda. Um, my role uh, at present, I work as a project engineer. I'm, I'm, I'm working on, on uh, clinical engineering uh, projects uh, in a capacity of uh, a consultant, but a consultant who is employed full time. So I, I, I work, I work full time uh, in on clinical engineering uh, assignments uh, my past background i spent uh, a lot of time uh, in the role of uh, medical device vendors so i did uh, uh, work uh, for a company then went for further studies came back uh, founded my own company but uh, over time, uh, you know, situations evolve. Uh, that time competition was less, then competition became more and more. And then I felt, I think it's time to, to graduate to the next level and have my uh, niche market. So with uh, 20 years plus uh, on the job, uh, I could uh, ably qualify as a, as a consultant and I'm happy for the current role that I'm in uh, and I'm, I'm actually quite excited about it because I feel that I can see what I do uh, impacting on uh, patient outcomes, not just at national level, it's actually even at, at regional level. So it, it really feels uh, quite uh, uh, encouraging. You know, when you do your work and you ask, but really, what impact does it cause, you know? I'm in a position where I feel that, you know, I, I feel the impact of what I do when you see the patients who benefit from your services, when you see carrying out project upgrades and you see that uh, people are being served better. Well, Sam, I know you're well respected by the Ministry of Health there in Uganda and, uh, you know, in a variety of ways. You're also very involved in your national uh, professional society. Can you tell us about that? You, Unami, uh, I think. <laughs> well, uh, I think when it comes to matters of respect, I think it is the other parties which should talk. I can't say that I'm respected. I don't know it is them to well, say. Well, I know our, our brother, Sam Wanda, who has been a part of the Ministry of Health, uh, sees you as, uh, you know, the bright young star, but keep going. Yeah, he's, he's, he's our mentor. We, 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 we look up to him in so many ways. He's, he's our mentor. So... Uh, but you know the work. The work is is really cross cutting. There is no way it cannot be uh, uh, known about. You know, for example, now when I talk of uh, critical work going on, where I work, we are upgrading to become a center of excellence in oncology in East Africa. Uh, the place is called the Uganda Cancer Institute. That's where I'm based right now. And you know, you are you are you we, we are introducing some cutting edge uh, technology. I'm talking about things like uh, a linear accelerator, which we're actually in the process of installing right now as I speak. We have uh, three Tesla MRI coming uh, shortly. Already the contract is awarded. You have a modern laboratory in the workings, just waiting for the building to reach the construction level. It is already being uh, built. So. Yeah, it would be a clinical research laboratory uh, as well as a, um, uh, a clinical laboratory as well as a research laboratory. We shall have uh, modern operating theaters on that building uh, with the telemedicine and you know uh, uh, you know video uh, video capture that, that that kind of technology. It will it is kind of groundbreaking technology. So. I think uh, when you talk of being known, I think it's because of such developments that we are sure. introducing. Well, tell us about your National Clinical Engineering and Biomedical Engineering Society there in Uganda. I know you've been a part of that. 
Uh, thank you. Our society is called UNAMI, and UNAMI in full stands for Uganda National Association for Medical and Hospital Engineering. UNAMI. Uh, we have a website, uh, unami.or.ug. Uh, ours, I've, I've interacted with so many associations uh, across the world. I find ours to be in a unique position where I think, I don't know of any other association that combines biomedical or, or clinical engineering component and, and hospital engineering component. Which I know is a necessity in your part of the world to, to combine these disciplines, right? Yes. So our association has both uh, memberships. So because we, we find that we, we, we really, we are one, uh, two arms of the same, of, of the same role, more, more, if, sure. if I can put it that way, yes. Well, how has all this, both your personal job and your society and your colleagues, how has all this been impacted by COVID? In recent months, um, not not so much. I mean, are are clinical engineers but involved I, I, in the front lines I, I tried, of? I, I tried to I tried to to, to to cross check with colleagues before I came for this discussion, just to be sure that I'm not uh, uh, misleading uh, the other colleagues out there. But the, the few have try to put fillers across to uh, who are in really uh, major hospitals. They tell me they have not yet gone to the front line. Uh, but I know you guys have had to provide oxygen training. systems and ventilators and other respiratory equipment and been a part of that, I imagine. No, I, I think it all boils down to having had uh, uh, low numbers. Uh, okay, in our well, that's good news. Yeah, it's, it's about the, 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 the incidence hasn't been uh, uh, so, so pronounced. Though in the recent, the numbers have been climbing, but it, it is still on a, on, a, on a low level compared to other places. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, uh, what's, what's your vision for the future of clinical engineering in Uganda, Sam? Um, Looking uh, forward, or where we are going in the next coming years, I, I think there is a lot of uh, development that we are going to witness. Uh, I can tell you that uh, currently we have a challenge of, um, you know, membership. Our membership is voluntary. I know it is voluntary, you know, uh, people will, will say, but, but what do I benefit? And oh, oh, another way to ask that question is, but, what do I lose if I'm not a member? Uh, now it tends to make, you know, some people just choose not to participate, choose not to, to stay away. But now the ministry, okay, the government to start with, we are they're introducing a national insurance policy. And with national insurance policy, they are going to also have hospitals enter into an in accreditation system of sorts that for you to be eligible for those uh, services to, 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 for the national insurance policy to go through your organization, you must be accredited. So we see that when that happens, accreditation will also come to our profession because they say, okay, do you have people who are competent to look after your equipment? And I think our association will begin to have a more pronounced role because they'll be at the forefront of vetting who are the compete, who are the, you know, the, the qualified ones who are not the qualified ones, who are the experienced ones, who are not the experienced ones. And I think in that way, people will feel, will start to be compelled, compelled. Now they will see a, a definite benefit by being in association so that it can give them that professional uh, cover, quote unquote. But that aside, I see also there is growing uh, um, impact in the education sector because uh, the, the biomedical engineering was not on the scene um, 10 years ago or so. But as we speak now, we have, uh, I think we are now counting towards five different institutions counting, uh, uh, offering uh, biomedical engineering. So that, that gives us uh, cause for hope. And thirdly, even the ministry itself 
has come out to start recognizing the profession and I think uh, that is the best thing that has happened uh, in the recent uh, uh, two years or so. Uh, when the ministry starts to recognize the profession, then everybody else will just uh, uh, come in line. So they have created now a department of biomedical engineering. They have recruited, uh, they have um, put out job adverts uh, inviting specifically biomedical engineers, which is a first. So that gives us uh, uh, hope for the future that when we have the professional presented within the ministry, I think uh, it will begin to uh, reinforce our work so much. Uh, also, we want to see that the, the, the profession gets represented at uh, important decision-making bodies. Take the example of the, the regulatory body. We have a regulatory body where well, they have a law in the making to expand beyond drugs to food and devices. We hope when they do, when they go into devices, uh, they, they will start also to recruit uh, our profession and think that gives us also, I say, uh, in the shaping of uh, um, healthcare, the way it should uh, go. What a great answer and what great developments and so glad to hear that, Sam. I know you've worked hard individually and also tried to help raise this, you know, the credentialing level of others. So, and the Ministry of Health getting involved, I'm so excited to hear all that. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen in Uganda, but it all sounds good. And, you know, CED is standing by to partner with UNAMI and uh, yourself in, in, many, in any ways we can. Of course, we've had the 25 webinars this year, half of them related to COVID issues, half of them related to CE competency issues. So uh, we look for ways to partner together with you guys in the future. And thanks for your time today. Thank you. We appreciate the, the, the affiliation. Oh, well, very good. And bye for now, but great, great interview. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.